Hey everyone, welcome back to the vlog. In this video, we're going to be talking about how long a cricket actually takes to grow, uh, but more importantly, we're going to talk about population um, drop off. And by that, I actually mean so when we put X amount of crickets into this bin from pinheads all the way through the life cycle from small, medium, and then onto large, and actually talk about how many crickets we lose because that is a factor. Um, and what we try and do to limit the number of crickets actually dropping off and what we've kind of discovered. So those are the two things we're actually going to talk about today in the vlog and yeah, hopefully you guys learned something because we definitely have here. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the actual growth rate of crickets and how long they take to grow. Now, if you watched um, some of our previous videos, you would have seen or heard that the actual difference between the top and the bottom of our container is about a two degree difference in temperature, which does make a big difference in terms of growth rate. So what we do to try and manage that is because we have all our crickets pretty well breeding um, down the far end there, so we've got all the adults down there, they lay into the breeding soils. We put all the breeding soils into a container like this, but you can see, and pretty much the crickets just hatch there. We then have these egg cartons here where we then pull the crickets off uh, because we'll have excess amount of pinheads. We'll have too many pinheads um, in one of these bins. Like We can have close to 100,000, if not even more, um, crickets hatching in one of those bins. So we definitely have to start separating them because we all know that the more crickets you have, the more territorial they are, the less space there is, the more they try and eat each other. So we actually just try and limit how many crickets we have in each bin. So we try and aim for under 30 mils um, of crickets. So you would have seen on the Instagram, and I actually just put a video up now of us uh, like separating all the crickets so you can just see how many are actually going into the bins. Yep. So once we separate all the crickets, we then pretty much just have food, water, all the essentials, safety, the nice warm environment for the crickets to grow up in. And what we find with those pinheads, so the pinheads, um, I'll just read off these days. So from pinheads, um, we can have them hatching as early as seven days, which is pretty quick when they're up the top because up the top is a hotter temperature. But then normally what we find is the last crickets are born about 14 days at the latest. So it's two weeks for our pinheads to be fully hatched. But like I said, there's crickets being born after seven days. So there's just that slight difference and that's always what we found with our farm. Now from there, it takes about two weeks. So from those seven days, it takes about two weeks. So once the cricket's been born, it takes two weeks for the crickets to turn to a small cricket. And then it's pretty much another two weeks to medium and then another two weeks on to being a large cricket. And then the range of those crickets from then actually being a large cricket, because they can actually look quite big. They do look, like if I take you down here, obviously these guys are breeding in this tub right here. And so are those, but you know, tub 20, these guys are actually starting to get reasonably big, but they're not ready to actually start. If I just lift up one of these, you'll be able to see them in here. Right, they actually are getting pretty big, but they're not ready to start breeding. So it's pretty much a two week um, size difference, if that makes sense. So two weeks from pinheads to small, two weeks from pinheads, uh, sorry, small crickets to then me uh, mediums, and then from mediums to large is another two weeks, and then two weeks beyond, they're just gonna be breeding from there on out. So that's what we've found with our conditions and if you watch one of our earlier videos we haven't actually changed anything to do with our humidity or we haven't changed anything to do with our temperature so we're still running our container at 28 degrees and for the most part it sits around here 60% humidity um, which can be quite warm. It's probably not quite 60 at the moment because I'm still wearing my jumper I can feel it I'll have to double check it but in that it mainly sits around uh, 60 60% 60 humidity. So that is pretty much how fast 
our crickets and the actual life cycle of our crickets um, on our farm. So that's super, super handy to know and I'd love to actually know what your cricket farms, if you do breed crickets or what you've discovered and what you're finding because we definitely do understand if you run the container a little bit hotter, supply a bit more food, more regularly, you will see a bigger and faster growth rate. But it's all about time and how much effort you want to put into your farm versus trying to like turn a profit because cricket farming can be quite labor intensive, that's for sure. All right, now we're just outside of the container and we're going to be talking about our population growth and the drop off in population that we see across um, from pinheads to, all the way through to large um, and yeah like that might be a little bit of a concern like you hear the word drop off of population you're like oh my gosh we're losing crickets um, but what got me or what got us thinking here at shoe bugs is there was this pretty cool video posted on YouTube um, what was it one month ago I'm looking at it just here on my phone it's called bugs um, it's not just food for reptiles and it's about a farm in you know, America where they have much bigger farms than what we have here in Australia. But um, they're actually trying out this new feeding system with boxes vertically stacked, but pretty much they put the food into the boxes and they don't touch the crickets ever again. So what the food is in there is in there to stay and um, I, I'm like, that's amazing because that's actually less handling. Whereas like we feed our crickets once every three days. It doesn't take long, but you know, every, every time you have to do something in the farm it does actually count in terms of labor so you do have to be conscious of it so their system you pretty much once they put the crickets in there from pinheads they put x amount of food in there and obviously no one's going to tell you or talk about <laughs> the food um <laughs> with crickets and how much they eat all that stuff is up for debate um obviously you have different types of food so there's um going to be a different growth rate with what you're feeding them we obviously have a grain-based diet where we have oats wheat barley we, we don't lie about that to anyone. We're open about talking about that stuff. But then we also have oranges, so we do have that little um, bit different uh, feed, if that makes sense, because not everyone has access to feeding oranges to their crickets. So um, they actually mentioned in the video that there is, in one tub, you know, they, they call it a half inch cricket. So, you know, like 1.25 um, centimeters. And so that's kind of classified as a small cricket on, our scale and they said like you know they'll put so much food in there and then that cricket um, might actually turn in although so those crickets in that tub once they've been put in there from pinheads they'll turn into about 6,000 um, crickets and I'm like perfect like that's a decent amount of crickets but then they mentioned that if they then leave them to um, leave them to actually be a large cricket it will then turn into about 2,000 crickets and I'm like wow that's a pretty pretty big drop off um, so I found that pretty fascinating and then we started to looking into like well what's our actual drop off of our crickets because we've never really been in the situation where we have had too many pinheads to deal with and we've only just started having that problem on the farm and so we're actually having to split up our bins and we've been keeping a little bit more of our records and data about what um, the growth rate is of those crickets and so I've got some numbers here for you so we've been keeping track of bin number 20 um, and we just we just keep everything on an Excel spreadsheet just here and if I can actually just focus the camera real quick you'll be able to see a little bit better. So bin number 20, uh, the crickets started hatching on the 17th of April and then they moved all the way through to the 23rd of April um, and then of course we then moved some of those pinheads out so we could record um, how many millages of crickets actually um, like got put into those bins so they got they came from bin 14 15 and 16 then we got 27 mils now um, that's millimeters obviously so we have like a rain gauge that we record to see how many pinheads we got so where we're going off of like each millimeter is um, about a thousand crickets and I'll actually put up a photo right now that you can see and you can try and count for yourself because that is one millimeter of crickets and it is probably a little bit more than a thousand but that's just what we're going off of because it is it's just too hard to count like to be honest it's silly so if someone can count that and leave a comment below that would be really handy for us now um now the next thing so we've got say 27,000 crickets and then on the june the third of this month we then 
pulled out and we probably had some extra small crickets. So, and the difference between this, I'm talking like this is millimeters. Like this is, this is such a small difference between like an extra small cricket and a, and a small cricket. Like there's nothing in it. And especially with the difference you saw before when I was talking about the growth rate of crickets that it can be actually, you know, like a two week difference from top to bottom or like just for whatever reason, if they've, they're born a little bit earlier, they eat a little bit more, they're bigger, they're stronger. So we do have a bit of a size difference with our crickets on the farm in each um, container. And look, that could just be us. We might be doing something wrong, but to be honest, we're finding that's what most people have on their farms as well. So of course, we've got a bit of size difference. So it's it's about an estimate, right? And we're just trying to do our best with these things. And I just think it's important that this information does actually kind of start to get out there because it is really important for running a business. So then I found that we had about a kilo of extra small crickets. So we're estimating off the weight of those crickets to be about between 20 and 50, uh, so 15,000 to 20,000 crickets. And like this is, this was a crazy, crazy amount of crickets. And I wish I actually, filmed how many crickets are in this container and I'll actually have to have a quick little look to see if I've got something on my phone of a video and if I do I'll put it up right now but if not didn't have a video so it was a lot of crickets like a stupid amount of crickets so but we obviously did see a bit of a drop off in population because we did have 27,000 crickets and then it dropped down to um, you know between 15 and 20,000 we weren't 100% sure because there was that size difference and that was just a straight up estimate. But now as of today, I measured it again and that's, this is the 25th of June. And what, what we have essentially found is, so obviously that, that size difference, so extra small into medium. So you know that two week difference when it goes from just being a small, so not an extra small, just a small to a medium. We have then found that the medium, so we actually saw a drop in weight, so we had 882 grams, and then that worked out to be about 4,410 crickets. Now, <coughs> you go, <laughs> first thing that I thought, and when I was speaking to my dad, Tim, that you would have seen on other videos, we would just go like, that's a big drop off. But then again, like that was pretty similar to some of the numbers um, and drop off numbers that we were seeing in that one video that um, the farm in America were talking about. So it is a big factor. And what we've then gone on to do is because we record all our crickets as well on this spreadsheet to see when we take the crickets out to know um, where the crickets have gone and um, where we've shipped them to. But what we have also found is <clears throat> we have anywhere between that 3,000 to 4,000 large crickets in all of our bins, right? And that's a pretty safe estimate because we're going in between 20 to 30 mils. And then by what we're finding is by the end of their life cycle, and this is with us feeding food, right? So we still feed them um, every three days. Um, and yeah, so across their lifetime, we're seeing a drop off from, let's just say 25,000 crickets to yeah, 3,500 crickets. Um, which is still great because you know across our farm and we've got 20 breeders like that's still a lot of large crickets and that's a lot of large crickets breeding mm -hmm. and that's with us having the two containers so yeah obviously that's that's still great for the farm it's just super interesting it's information that we have on our growth rate of crickets it's could be completely different um, at your farm or what you've seen with cricket farming <laughs> but like I said before no one really tells you or talks about uh, what actually happens on a cricket farm and the information is still super, super secretive. Like that video that got posted on YouTube about, that's the first time I've nearly heard people talk about growth rate of crickets. So um, yeah, I just think this video is one of those things that will evolve as well. So what we're trying to do with our cricket farm is we're trying to increase that population. So we've got a couple tubs now set up that we've only put in say uh, 10 milliliters of crickets and we've got ones with 20, we've got ones with 30 and we're gonna keep track of all those um, crickets across the actual lifespan and we're gonna see how many crickets are actually dropping off. But it's pretty safe to say that they do eat each other um, and they, they don't just eat each other a little bit, they eat each other a lot. And no matter how the amount of food we put in, we make sure we always have food in there, we're feeding them every three days, they still do it. So it's, it goes to show that maybe the system that we might have to start moving into is putting a bunch of food in at the start like that video and then not touching them because they're gonna eat each other anyway. And that's gonna be something that we're gonna to have to talk about and evolve because we are actually gonna be building a new facility. 
So we're going to be um, increasing our farm by, like we've got, what do we have now? We've got 64 containers now and then we're going to build a new facility. So we're going to keep the old one still, but then we're actually going to build a facility that's going to have 240-ish containers. So we're going to make a bit of a big jump and we're pretty excited about it and we're going to see if we can really start to push a bit more of the human consumption stuff going um, with Mikel and Grub and that would be really really exciting for the Australian insect industry and sustainable protein and making sure people get the best bang for their buck because the research is absolutely flooding at the moment with insect protein and how good it is for you like we would have seen that the absorption rate so they compared cricket protein to whey protein and they found that there was a 50% better absorption rate uh, for cricket protein, so that's a huge positive for all those gym junkies out there So yeah, obviously crickets are they're not I don't think they're going any, anywhere anytime soon. They're gonna play a role in our food system and um, It's not like you're gonna have to be eating them every single day But if you're looking for best bang for your buck in terms of protein, then yeah, you're gonna be looking at insects for sure so we're going to be making a bit more of a push in that space and it's yeah it's cool and so this information like I'm, I'm more than happy to share this stuff if you've got any questions send through a message or an email and yeah good luck out there with your cricket farms and um we'll see you in the next video thanks for tuning in bye